am going to go ahead and mute everybody who's just not talking right now. Just to get us going. All right. Perfect. So uh, welcome. We are live uh, with our, I believe, our third community coffee. Uh, my name is Joe Russo. I am the uh, CEO of Palm Beach Tech, and I am also very badly not, not even drinking coffee. I have Gatorade today. So all on me for, for not even following our protocols here. I uh, literally woke up this morning uh, and just started diving right into it, going over uh, some of the SBA uh, and the PPP things that um, have come out over the weekend and then just on uh, nonstop calls uh, all day. So um, I'm with, uh, with y'all on uh, what's going on out here in the world today and trying to be on top of it all. Uh, but we're uh, pretty lucky to have some really awesome people joining us today for um, a pretty unique uh, conversation. Uh, one of the things that we, um, I think, have not really realized or noticed in the past few weeks is that there's still uh, a lot of business that can be done uh, with government, and uh, not only on a local basis, but also at uh, several levels, including the state um, level. So we're going to be talking a little bit about how technology companies can um, do some uh, business with um, governments uh, during uh, the COVID-19 era. So this is, again, a little bit, um, you know, different. I don't think a lot of uh, startups or companies really look at uh, exactly uh, what's going on out there uh, in the world today as far as government um, goes. But there's a mass amount of opportunities out there, either if you're a, a large business, small business, um, there's some really good opportunities. So uh, we're going to dive right into that, but uh, I would like to introduce uh, our two uh, guests here today who are going to be talking uh, with us about that. Uh, first is uh, Sheila Van Hoos, who is uh, actually a board member of Palm Beach Tech. Uh, she is a lobbyist with the Southern Group and was formerly a um, government affairs director with uh, Code.org. So she's uh, been a, a friend of mine for a very long time and has also been uh, in the tech industry. Uh, and then we have Jack Sine. I, I, did I pronounce that right? I'm sorry, Jack. Either way, Sine, Sine. Oh. I respond to all of them. Okay, perfect. I, I wasn't so sure about that, but he is uh, the co-founder of GovSpend, uh, and they work a lot with um, uh, uh, governments and a SaaS-based solution they have. So uh, I'd like you, for both of you, want to give a one-minute intro uh, to yourselves and what your uh, companies do, and then we can uh, dive in from there. Um, well, thanks. Thanks, uh, Joe. And I do have my coffee, although I have a toddler at home. So folks tend to think it's not coffee, but it absolutely is coffee um, in this cup. Uh, so thanks for the introduction. I, just real quickly to share a little bit about what who Southern is. We're um, the largest lobbying firm in the state of Florida, one of the largest lobbying firms in the state of Florida. Um, we're not a law firm that happens to lobby. We do one thing and we do it exceedingly well, and, and that's um, advocacy work uh, for, for clients, um, some of the biggest brands in the world from um, Apple, Walt Disney World, um, uh, FedEx. Uh, we, we work to connect those clients with state and local government. Um, when we're in legislative session, we're focused on policy and appropriations, of course, and then out of session and, and what we kind of find ourselves in today is helping folks connect uh, with, with the right decision makers. And, and we're able to do that because um, our partners come out of the highest levels of government. Uh, we, we know the process inside and out and we know, we know the players. And so we've been able to connect a lot of folks um, at the local and state state level. So that's a little about who Southern Group is. I uh, live in South Florida. I'm in Parkland, so not uh, just down the street. Um, and it's been really a pleasure over the last year to be a part of the Palm Beach Tech Association. Uh, my focus tends to be on education policy. So I think even on the on the board, I, I tend to to be the uh, tech ed person, um, you know, waving the flag when it comes to industry certifications and CTE programs. Um, but it's it's been a real pleasure and honor uh, to be a part of that board, Joe. And thank you again for every little little thing. It seems like um, the workforce side and the education side is something that um, often, you know, is really complicated, but you always seem to know it on every bit of in and out. So thank you very much for that. Uh, Jack, we'll go over. Sure. My, my name is Jack Sani. I'm one of the co-founders of a company called GovSpend. We're actually headquartered in Deerfield Beach, and uh, so just below, obviously, Palm Beach County. Um, we help companies sell to the government. We also work with the government to find vendors and source products. So we kind of work on both sides of the house. The unique part about our company, which we'll, we'll talk a little bit about, is uh, 
we maintain this database of all government purchase orders. So we go agency to agency, gather their purchase orders from about 10 years ago forward. And so we have the software as a service where you can go online, just like Google, if you sell a particular product, you can see literally every agency that's bought that product, who they bought it from and what they paid. So it's really, really from a sales, business development, marketing perspective, it lets you to kind of look behind the curtain, figure out, hey, which agencies are really uh, interested in what I sell. And then secondly, I would say, particularly during this time, when there's all this money in the government world, a lot of folks feel like it's all medical or there's, you know, there's only certain folks that'll you know, have opportunity with the government. I would just say, particularly for this group, there's a ton of opportunity, particularly in the tech world, as government agencies really need a ton of infrastructure to help them execute now that all their folks really are either at home or they have all these mobile test sites. So really a lot of opportunity out there in the tech world right now. Yeah, and just some, some bullet points I have for people either here to discuss later uh, or on Facebook. I read an article this morning and I prompted to immediately text it to Sheila. Uh, the state of Florida actually is investing a half million dollars right now in a COVID-19 related application. And obviously there's different efforts at the federal level to respond to um, COVID-19 with technology. And when we take that and add up all of those things, there's a huge economy right now just behind uh, the government response to coronavirus, not to mention all of the different pieces that get added to the puzzle. Um, you know, last year, Palm Beach Tech actually hosted a hackathon in um, partnership with the city of Boca Raton on uh, civic uh, technology. So there's always some opportunity there. And, uh, you know, everything that you use to work with um, government, either to pay your bills, you know, ironically, that seems to be the easiest thing you can do with government technology these days, uh, or, you know, just simply um, even uh, do the census like uh, we all did the other day. So um, we'd really love for you guys to take it away. I don't know, um, Jack, I know you have slides. Sheila, I don't know if you have anything, if you guys want to um, uh, maybe Jack, if you want to go first, you can share your screen and um, you know, we can go with uh, Sheila from that. Well, Sheila, do you want to do a quick intro and kind of just level set uh, the process? Yeah, that, I, I can do that. And what maybe what I can do is frame the conversation a little bit. Um, so the reality is in this state, we know how to handle hurricanes really well. And we do that exceedingly well. We, we, I think we wrote the playbook on how to manage hurricanes and how local governments and state governments and citizens interact and, and react. In a pandemic, we're learning, right? And I think I think we're all seeing that, and we're feeling that um, that at a federal, state, and local level, we're all trying to figure figure this out. When would we have ever thought that the entire school system in the United States, um, and also globally, but let's just focus on the U.S., would go completely 100% online for the remainder of the school year, right? I know we we uh, I think Broward County is the only school district that has been very open and honest about end of the school year versus saying give it another month, another month. But let's let's look at that reality. We've gone completely online. Um, workers that can, employees that can go remote, have gone um, remote. Um, and so, uh, and then we have a large unemployed population now. When you think of the taxing that is on a system, right? So I think when we think of government opportunities and what's happening, and that, that's why I wanted to frame this conversation a little bit, um, we have uh, a, a surge of unemployment that crashed the Department of Economic Opportunity system. Today in a press conference, Governor DeSantis was chatting a little bit about that. He talked about the crash and, and he was saying prior to the, the site going down, it, there was a 72 second latency as people navigated the website. So imagine that frustration um, of, of, of slow speed on your website. And so they've had to make an investment and build that capacity up on the website. Um, on a school district front, schools are finding that uh, they had to train in a week, train teachers of how to be remote online teachers at the same time, train students on how to navigate websites. Very, very complicated. We're going to have ups and downs over this time period because as a culture, we weren't set up for remote work at this level. And I think what's great about Palm Beach Tech Association and a lot of the startups um, in this organization is you guys probably on a very regular basis are more socially, this has been an easier transition from a social, cultural um, perspective than government has um, transitioned. And, and um, Joe, you and I have talked about this over the last year, but really Palm Beach Tech and each of you really could step up into a role of advising your friends in local and state government on the tools that you use um, and how you have made 
successful transitions from working from home. And we, we see that in the tech world all the time. The other really interesting piece when you think of, um, I think of all of this is, is the antiquated systems, right? So we talked about capacity of, of the Department of Economic Opportunity. Governor Murphy out of New Jersey this week put out a call to action. He is looking for volunteer computer scientists that can help uh, New Jersey state's websites be uh, uh, recoded and updated because they're all in COBOL. So that really puts, uh, puts it in perspective of where we are um, in this country in terms of where governments have invested in infrastructure. We, we, we didn't need for the entire state to be on Line. And so we didn't invest in an infrastructure um, at that capacity. And so, uh, so we're seeing those investments um, very quickly. The state is making, uh, you know, they sent out a bid for uh, call center employees that are going to be working from home. And that happened over the weekend. They trained hundreds of people. So we're going to see quick bids coming in and out over the next couple weeks um, as the state and federally, but let's focus on the state as our state and our local governments try to up their resources, build their capacity, both on people and technology, in order to be successful during this time period. Um, and then the other thing I would add is, um, so we see, we tend to see in, in economic recessions, um, a lot of government uh, uh, spending take place. Um, and really that's, you know, the between uh, lowering, reducing interest rates, um, increasing the quantity of loans, all of that is to help mitigate uh, recessions or uh, alleviate uh, the pain that is on, on folks. Um, so we are going to continue to see increased spending just to inject money into the economy. And so even last week, Governor DeSantis announced $2.1 billion dollars in transportation projects across the state. So we are going to kind of, uh, well, people aren't on the road, so it's a good time to work on our highways, but it's just that influx of cash. So you're seeing, um, you're seeing spending to help in, uh, uh, kind of put money into the economy in the state um, to keep jobs going, to, to work on some existing projects. And then you're seeing spending in response to this pandemic. So I wanted to frame that because there's two types of spending that is taking place right now um, across the state. And so with that, I think that's a good transition over to Jack in terms of what he's seeing on the procurement side and what his system is able to offer. Um, but there's a lot of opportunity right now, folks. Um, you know, it, it, they're, they're, um, in crisis, I think some people can rise to the occasion with a level head and, and help problem solve. Um, if we're not uh, uh, terrified in our fear and, and uh, frozen in our fear, we can really make some um, some big changes and, and updates. And I think um, you all are experts when it comes to technology. Um, the Palm Beach Tech Association really has an opportunity here uh, to step up and be the leaders in advising um, how we navigate this new world, because that's this is our new normal. And so we need to find some normalcy in that. Jack? Yeah, that's so true. Amen. Yeah, I would, I would, uh, I think it's a great intro. And I, I would just add to that for the folks that are on this call, particularly the, the things that the government are interested in, maybe more, you would see more simplistic than what you're thinking about. Like the government, literally, when they do these mobile sites, they need hotspots, they need the computers, like all the, all the things that may seem very basic to the private industry the government would feel like, oh, we need all of this infrastructure. So as you're thinking about it, I would just, again, encourage you to think it's probably more basic than some of the high end or cutting edge stuff you've been working on, because there's that's such a need. So um, appreciate the opportunity to be here. I don't want to turn this into a gov spend sales presentation. What I really want to do is kind of say, hey, we want to, at the end of the day, whatever's happened at a global or national perspective, it's really how does, how does it impact you I don't want to give you some specific things you can do for your company and for yourself to actually take advantage of what's happening. That's really what we pride ourselves on. It's saying, hey, how can you actually make hay in the current time frame? Because again, a lot of small businesses are really struggling to get through this process as private industry has slowed down. The international market is basically dead with the pandemic. So government spending is the key that we believe. And so I just want to, let me see if I can share my screen. Let's see how it goes. So did that work? Hopefully, great. So there's just a couple of things uh, we would just say, uh, I, I hate PowerPoint. So can everyone see my screen? So I, I, hate, I hate using PowerPoint. So I just wanted to put up a couple of slides and I'll show you a website. So this, the government is gonna be spending more money the next couple of quarters than anybody else. So if you've had this kind of stereotype, I don't wanna work with the government, it's slow and arduous. I would just say two things. It's a ton of money. You're not gonna have to worry about, do they have money, which is a huge thing today, right? Secondly, the process is going to be much faster than you're used to. So all the stereotypes you're hearing about the government really have gone away. And oh, by the way, if you get in this market and learn how to do it, I would just say one stat we used to say even before the virus started, 
80% of government spending doesn't go through the bid and RFP process. Think about that. The government spends over $7 trillion a year. 80% of that spending doesn't go through the six to nine month bid and RFP process. There's a lot of ways the government buys. You can do it literally, we used to say a couple weeks or a couple days. Now it's down to a couple hours, believe it or not. So a ton of, ton of money out there. Secondly, as I just mentioned, with these state of emergencies that are happening, everything's happening much faster. So again, something that would take even a couple of weeks is now down to a couple of days. Things that took a couple of days, like we had one on this platform, I'll show you, we had one school in the Midwest, a public school that put up a need for 174 laptops. They awarded that in 48 hours for over 150K. So a lot of things are happening really quickly with the state of emergency, the procurement folks now can really avoid a lot of the normal regulations and rigmarole because we have to get it out there. We need these mobile test sites. We need the infrastructure set up. Having it done six, eight weeks from now is no good, right? And so there's really three things we say to companies. Hey, go out and sign up. There's a site called GovQuote. We actually set that up about a year ago. This site is totally for free. You're a, what ha what's happening on the site, government agencies are putting out their RFQs. It's totally for free to them. And it's totally free for you as a vendor. So please, when this, when this uh, uh, session's over, please go to govquote.us, register your company. Again, it's totally for free. And what you will see, government agencies are constantly putting up things all day. We need masks, we need ventilators, we need all of these PPE things, but they're also putting out, you'll be surprised. I need all of the logistical infrastructure, the computers, the hotspots, t-shirts, you, you name it. All normal things for the government to operate, happening constantly, totally for free. Go there, if you do nothing else for me on this call, go there, register your company, it'll take about five minutes, then there's nothing, it doesn't cost you a thing, but you'll see government agencies both in Florida and around the country posting infrastructure things. Secondly, if you're not sure how to go to the gov uh, how to sell to the government, there's this thing, GovSales University, you can go, there's some online on-demand courses you can get, a bunch of them are for free. It'll teach you kind of how to sell to the government. It's very similar to the private industry, especially right now during the virus, but you can go there. And then the last piece is GovSpend. That's actually a real thing that I talked about. That's our core database. But um, that's really, if you want to invest in uh, what you want to do to sell the government, there is a fee to that last part. But all those resources, um, it might be a lot, are available on this one site. So if you just go to govsalesuniversity.com forward slash COVID-19, you can see the URL in the upper left-hand corner of my screen, govsalesuniversity.com COVID-19. You'll kind of see there's, in the middle of this page, there's the four things you can do. We actually added this vendor registry. Here's the GovQuote piece. It'll link you directly, go register. You'll see down here, there's bids and notifications we'll give you for free. The Gov Sales University thing you can get. And then there's this vendor registry as well. So if you have specific things that you believe agencies need related to COVID-19, because what's happening now, the government agencies have a ton of money. They do not have enough suppliers. So if you've seen any of the national news, all of these folks that are running the federal and the state emergency funds are like, hey, we need stuff. We almost have a blank check to write and they can't find all the supplies. So if you have any of the things that you see out there, you can go register your company. We're actually gonna make agencies aware of you as a vendor. And so we'll actually submit that information to agencies for you again, because now it's just trying to find, normally it's the other way around. Normally there's a ton of supply and who's gonna buy it. Right now it's totally inverted. There's a ton of need, a ton of money, and the supplies are not out there. If, if you saw any of the national news, a lot of the folks are like, hey, they're chasing ghosts. Everyone says they have masks. Everyone says they have PPE. And when they actually go, hey, let me see it. Or let me, let me. Oh, do you have it? Can you show us a picture of it? They're like, well, it's coming. Or, hey, the warehouse is empty. So we actually want to help folks actually connect with the government agency. So on this page, again, if you go to uh, govsalesuniversity.com, COVID-19, you can go to GovQuote. You'll register your company totally for free. You'll see everything's coming out from agencies. If you have specific COVID-19 type items, you can go to register your company. If you wanna see the COVID-19 bids and RFPs, because those are typically larger dollar items, we'll actually give you access to that for free. And then again, on the lower right, if you wanna, if you have no idea how to sell to the government, this all sounds like Chinese. It sounds like, what are all these terms? Uh, there's a place you can go and it'll take videos. You can do it at night, online, whatever you want. They'll actually give you all the terms. You can kind of learn the acronyms if you've never sold to the government. But I just wanna encourage you again, it's much simpler than you think it is. You might get lost in some of these terms like GSA schedule or state schedule or what's a sole source. None of it's rocket science. I promise you, you can learn any of it. It's just a little voluminous, but you can learn any of it in a weekend or a day or two. All of those terms will, are super simple to explain. And so you can then have a way to actually go sell to the government 
and actually win some of this business because it's a ton, ton, ton of money. My last thing I would just say, and I'll shut up, would be, um, again, if you as a company, please do not wait till July or August to jump into this. The government's going to spend more money than anybody else if you're dragging your feet. When you wait to July or August, maybe when you're end of your rope, it could be too late at that point. We're seeing a lot of folks are like, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. And now they're laying off a ton of people. They're actually filing for bankruptcy. It's really sad. But the government is spending a ton of money on both medical, again, medical and non-medical stuff. You just heard Sheila mention, there's, they're going to do all of these infrastructure projects. So if you're in the concrete infrastructure world, there's a ton of opportunity there as well. But I think yesterday on GovCook, somebody wanted to do all new sidewalks in their city. I mean, it was a huge contract out there. So please don't wait to the end and feel like, I don't want to get in that world. Let me, try, let, me, let me overturn all these other stones. The other stones right now in the private world are going to be very empty. So please, please, please go out and take one of these measures. Even if you don't do any of this stuff for us, go out and uh, focus on the government market. It's huge. They have a ton of money and they need a ton of things. So Joe, I would turn it back over to you. I don't know if there's questions or if you wanted to deep oh, dive into that. Yeah, no, perfect. And um, if you want to unshare your screen there, oh, um, right. um, if, if you just, uh, I'll, I'll try and add those to our uh, Facebook, but if you can add it just to the chat, those links there would be super helpful. The one thing I got from that is there's really no time to waste. There's no reason to hold off. If you have a opportunity that your business can provide to a government, search that out, make it happen now, because there's one group that's going to be sure to be spending money in the next uh, quarter or so, it's going to be the government. So uh, that is really solid advice to everybody out there. And if you know of anybody, if you're on the call, listening, watching, whatever, share that around because a lot of people uh, are not realizing that and not seeing it. And I see it, uh, I think as black and white as you guys do, but um, you know, there, there's quite a lot uh, going on right now. Can I, um, can, I, can, I, can I have one more thing to that too? Yeah. So one of the things I would just say is really important. Maybe as you see a thing, we've all seen, I, in the national media, we all see the my pillow guy, right? He's like, I make pillows and I make bedding and now he's making masks. So I would also encourage you, if you have a management team of your, your core folks, I would look at your core competencies because maybe you go, hey, I don't do this or I don't do that. But listen, as entrepreneurs, especially in the tech world, there are going to be some things you, sh you might be able to pivot to that are close to what you're doing that you could make a ton of money on. Because again, this is not going away. This is not a two week thing. And oh my gosh, I don't want to start doing this product because it'll be going away. I'm just telling you for the next six to nine months, this is going to be a major, major, major thing. And if you can do something close to what they need, I would encourage you to maybe pivot a little bit, find some of those opportunities because it could be an enormous revenue stream for you for, for the next year and going forward for many, many years because this is not going away. Yeah. Uh, thank, and thank you so much for, for making those points too. Um, Sheila, I, I would love to bring you back into... Um, the, the conversation here for a second, because, you know, uh, you're obviously very attuned to South Florida and very attuned to the state of Florida on what's going on right now. But what are some of the things that you're seeing that governments either at a local level or all the way up to the state level are really looking for uh, for their uh, technology needs right now? Yeah, that's a that's a great question. So we there's been a couple articles, even the article you sent to me this morning, Joe, of of the state of Florida looking at um, an app, and actually they're in the development of an app. They're using it's a Google Cloud app. Um, really, the the focus is, I, and I I don't represent a client that was working on that particular app. So there's about two other apps um, that I do represent the represent on those teams for those clients. Um, so this one app is really tracking data, pulling data. There's a lot of self-reported taking place. Um, Apple, who I represent, um, has an amazing app that they've, they've worked and developed and put out there. Um, and really it's a screening tool and they've partnered with the CDC. So you have companies who are partnering with at the federal level to push out technology uh, to, to help governments um, screen what's happening right now. Um, uh, there's another app that is, um, uh, it's already been developed and it's been, it's been conversations we've had um, at the state level, uh, which would really allow people to get back to work. Um, and it becomes almost like an ID that you are, you are clear to work, right? You have taken your test. You guys seen the antibody tests that are being talked about now. So you are clear, you can work. Um, when I think of like our clients that we, we help. So um, one thing is great when there's already a bid out and you know that there's a need and, and 
gosh, there's so much need. Um, but there's another, you know, there's that saying, you don't know what you don't know. And we can say that about government too. They don't know what they don't know. And so um, if there is a technology need, a lot of times they might not be, look, we're, we're working through this crisis. Our elected officials, our state government officials might not know uh, specific needs that they have. So we've worked with our clients uh, to, to get them a seat at the table, to have those conversations, to demo technology that then becomes a direct bid or then goes out to bid. And it's like that aha moment that yes, we need a way to screen an app to screen. We need an app uh, that every hospital in the state can plug into and share information. We need to do that data tracking. Uh, we've represented clients on the PPE side, on the masks, on hand sanitizer. Um, uh, we've done uh, testing kits, uh, antibody testing kits. We've shared that at the local and state level. So a lot of that is taking place as well. Um, and so that's a lot of state conversations, but let's even take a step down into your local governments. If we really think innovative of how our governments now have to operate, we have to take city commission meetings online. We have to think about public comments. There's probably a lot of opportunity that we have if we sit back and really take a moment to brainstorm. There's great opportunity uh, to partner with our local cities, right? So think Boca Raton, Delaware Beach, West Palm Beach, your county, um, and, and things that they can plug into state systems. But a lot of locals are going to want to have a little bit of control uh, so that they can uh, kind of maintain some, some little level of control, but also maintain what's happening, have access to data, think through some of those opportunities that are more um, localized, right? What's good for a particular city might not always be good for the entire state. The state is going to look at a more uh, a higher level what's what's best for the state and in your municipalities are going to think about your neighborhoods your communities how do you keep your neighbors safe when they're going to um, uh, the local grocery store or coffee shop right to grab to grab coffee so those are some i think technology opportunities that exist um, and there might not be a bid for those yet and those might be some conversations that palm beach tech association can have uh, with with local leaders and just kind of encourage encourage them. Um, you don't know, we don't know what to expect, right? And I think uh, that to Jack's point, we can be a little creative and innovative um, and, and be thought leaders in that space. So on that, do you see any? And this might be more just a observation than kind of an, a professional nature. Any opportunities for people to get involved? You mentioned uh, New Jersey. Uh, put out a call for COBOL pr programs. I think somebody actually misspelt it, if I heard correctly, the original uh, tweet or whatever it was. But any of those uh, civic hacking or civic engagement type of projects where people can say, hey, I can spend a few hours this weekend to help out. Yeah, I mean, I think that's an, oppor an absolute opportunity. Um, so my old organization, Code.org, and when I was with Code.org, I did their policy work across 15 states as their director of state government affairs. They are working on a hackathon. Um, uh, they are encouraging um, coders across the country, students, professionals, to think through how we can tackle uh, the current crisis, right? Let's, a, a, a true civic hackathon, and we've done that in the past, Joe, with the Palm Beach Tech Association, uh, but pulling the best minds across the country to start thinking of technology and apps that would be beneficial to help government, to help business, that's another thing. You know, there's there's government opportunities, there's business opportunities. As much as the state of Florida uh, needs to upgrade their technology system, um, there are plenty of big businesses that need to do that as well. Um, and so th I think that's an absolute opportunity to see how Palm Beach Tech uh, can, uh, if, as volunteers, um, startup volunteers, if, if we can create um, some type of um, opportunities for government, I think they would absolutely be on board with that um, if we have ideas. Yeah, I think that's a great opportunity. Um, I don't know yet, though, to be honest, like if we're comparing uh, Florida to New Jersey, I don't think our systems are are as antiquated <laughs> as New Jersey, <laughs> that we would have a problem uh, with updating them. I think we, we have invested um, in, in somewhat of an IT, IT infrastructure, an updated <laughs> infrastructure. Um, uh, you know, with a CIO and, and so forth, so. Yeah, and uh, one of the things too, and, and this is just maybe more of an interest, but the state of Florida has a technology division. Uh, it's under uh, Department of Management Services, I, if I remember correctly, but they also have uh, Florida Digital Services, if I remember right. So you have these two divisions, right? One is working more on the technology infrastructure and one is working more on innovation. Is that kind of how that works out? 
Um, it is, and I'm not very familiar. You're right, there are in Department of Management Service. I have a, a partner at, um, at Southern who actually was the former secretary of DMS. So I'm sure if she was on this call, she would love to spend the next hour talking about <laughs> the technology infrastructure yeah. in the state um, and the divide and the division. Um, so yeah, so you do have, that is separated out. You also have um, local municipalities, county commissions, they have their own their own system, school districts as well with, with their own systems. Um, there, there's a ton of opportunity. You know, school districts haven't all dis, aren't all using a similar process, right? So some have moved to Florida virtual. Um, some are running Zoom classrooms, Google classrooms. Um, they are looking at um, other opportunities with Canvas or Blackboard. So oh my goodness, there is so much opportunity. If you even think of Palm Beach School District and how we can help our local school district, um, get their kids online, get them connected. There's connectivity issues across this state. School districts have been handing out, I think Miami-Dade did about 60,000 devices. Broward County did another 60,000 devices. I'm not sure where Palm Beach is in terms of devices, but we need to get kids devices in order for them to even get online because now the education side of me is going to take over. There is an equity problem if we want to move school online um, and tr to truly give all kids an, uh, uh, the opportunity to a high class education, even online. We need to hit that equity divide or we're just we're picking winners and losers on the education side in this in this horrible crisis. Right. As well. But I I know this is not an education conversation, so I won't do that to you all. <laughs> yeah, I, I would love to add to that, that for the folks uh, that are just starting to sell to the government. I think what Sheila said is so true. Every agency is different. Like, I, I mean, you know, we do training. We have folks who are like, well, what's the norm? You know, here's the norm. There's not one, right? So literally, uh, I'll just give one real world example. We used to put the uh, software in the laptops on the police vehicles for both Palm Beach and Broward County. I did that in my prior company. You would think Palm Beach County had all the money, PBSO, and Broward County would be like, oh, I'm not sure. You know, Palm Beach, all the wealthy, Boca Raton, Palm. It was actually opposite. Broward County figured out how to get the money the federal money and the Broward County Police or Sheriff's Office, if you, if you look at them, their cars are equipped to the nine. They had figured out the money, they knew how it worked, and Palm Beach Sheriff's Office could not figure out the money, and they literally, they were the last people to get tasers, they were the last people to get computers in their cars, so every agency is a little different. Some folks have figured out where the money, how to do it, how they buy things, so you got to know every agency is a little different. If you hear something for the city of Boca Raton, it could be so different with the city of West Palm Beach, so you want to treat each organization you know, as a net new sales opportunity, if you're going to go after them and just know that what they say, they're like, well, everybody does it this way. It's just not true. They all do it a little differently. So. And, you know, I, I just briefly on the education piece, I mean, uh, I, I think I saw this statistic like 80, 85% of the students in Palm Beach County were actually online the first day. So, I mean, regardless of how smooth it went or not, I mean, big credit to uh, our school district here in Palm Beach County for really making it happen. And, yeah. um, you know, devices were, I think, a huge part, and Sheila hit on that too. Um, so, uh, you know, we're going to have um, some more conversation actually on Friday about this, right, Sheila? Or so we are doing a workshop on Friday. I've asked a couple of my partners to join me, Brian Bautista, who does a lot of our technology um, clients, who oversees a lot of those clients and those teams, uh, and Aaron Rock, the former secretary of Department of Management Services. I think that's like a really good tech group um, within Southern to sit and have a conversation of landing those government contracts. Um, you know. Uh, what Jack and his team have created at GovSpend is an amazing, amazing tool uh, that will give you guys access to a lot of resources. Um, it'll give you access to a lot of those RFPs and just kind of make sure that you're in the know of what's happening. Um, but there is this other conversation of um, if there isn't a contract out there, how do you engage government in order to encourage them, influence them uh, to step up and make an investment? Uh, they, you know, So we're going to tackle a little bit of that on Friday in that workshop. Um, and then we'll also we'll also talk through if if you do see an RFP, what are some of the best ways to structure that RFP or those conversations to have? Um, how do you work within a cone of silence? Um, and Jack made the point earlier. This stuff is happening super fast. We are seeing some RFPs go out, and less than 24 hours, the bid is due. So yeah. you, if you are not, I mean, there's an opportunity. Things move fast. People aren't. I don't even know if people have time to apply. Some of you have done RFPs. It takes a lot of time to put together an RFP package, and you're having to spit these out rather quickly. So we're going to cover a lot of that on Friday in our workshop, and I'm really looking forward to it. Awesome. And uh, just a 
on some personal notes, uh, Jack and Sheila, start with Jack. Uh, how have you guys been uh, transitioning either your company or in another side, your personal life uh, to this time that we're in, you know, working from home, being at home with the family? How has that all gone for you? Um, yeah, so from my end, uh, it's been interesting. So uh, like almost all companies, we have all gone to work from home. And so um, um, for us corporately, it's actually gone really well. We, we, we've been very fortunate that the, it's so funny, we've, we've been dealing in government procurement, me, the last 20 years. And so our company for the last 10, this current company, and we're always on the back burner. We're like kind of the, the stepchild, you know what I mean? Like, I don't want to talk about government procurement. It's boring. I don't want to talk about, you know, we're like the news, the media, the PR. We had to struggle to get our voice heard. And I'll just tell you the last four weeks, it's been just the opposite. We've been on a ton of podcasts and some national media. We were just on the um, Miami news stations. And so now this thing of government procurement and government purchasing has moved to the forefront. So from our end, it's literally taken off. It's been an amazing ride. And so we're, we're almost like the government agencies. We're kind of building it as we go because our, our team is now dispersed. We have a bunch of new products we're having to roll out to help support our clients. So it's been a world when I would say like my, I used to have a big Afro and now I'm, I have all my hair burned off. So my hair has been on fire. So that's the analogy I used in my team. And uh, one of the things I saw one comment, it said, hey, are all the things you're talking about just COVID related? So I just want to reiterate for everybody, there are both medical and non-medical things available and all the resources that are out there. So again, all this, everyone talks about COVID and the medical and the testing and the PPEs and all this stuff. Those are real things. So again, if you can pivot into that, awesome. But I just want to say all of the core things that companies on this um, web, web, webinar, this webcast um, offer, the government needs all those things too. So it is for both things. Like every week we catch it in COVID because what's happening with COVID because of the state emergency and all the money, it can, the purchasing can happen really, really quickly, which is new for the government agencies. But, but it is both medical and non-medical things. So stuff in education, stuff for normal logistics, all the tech infrastructure. Again, it's for both sides. It's just under the COVID title because it lets the government agency purchase it and do it much quicker. So don't get lost in, hey, is it just COVID stuff? COVID is just the means, the marketing means, and the financing means. So both sides happening, medical and non-medical. So what's happening, Sheila? How's it, ha how's it going in your house? <laughs> you know, when we're not in legislative session. We all work remotely anyways. Um, it's interesting that, you know, from a legislative perspective, um, when most people, we had, we extended session and most all the legislators had to return physically to the Capitol in the middle of this crisis, um, because we don't, our, our statute doesn't allow for remote voting. Um, so, you know, talk about uh, some difficulties transitioning to remote. So anyways, but at Southern, we, we work remotely when we're not, uh, when we're not all in session, because our main office is in Tallahassee, but we have, um, Kind of remote offices across the state uh so yeah so it's been that's an work professionally easy transition having a 20 month old um now running around the house uh not an easy transition um but but we are you know you're finding creative innovative ways i keep telling my husband this is our new normal so we you Amen. know we're, every night before we go to bed we're balancing calendars to figure out you know which hour each of us uh will have abigail to make sure that we get some solid work time as well um but you know what I, i'm finding everyone's been uh, really great when i'm on the phone with folks even in government um and when you have a screaming child in the background i think jack when you and i talked last week abigail was going crazy in the background and everyone has been really understanding everyone understands uh that we're all in the same boat and you know we'll get through this together you know, I would add to what's really interesting. I assume every company has either Slack or some communication vehicle. I really encourage folks on the, uh, especially on this call, um, like we set up a Slack channel for just folks that have kids because that is different, right? If you have a set of employees that are maybe single, their first or second career and they're 20 some, that's a totally different work at home environment than folks that have families or are married. They, they are totally different. And the more you can kind of service and connect the people that have similar issues, that goes a really, really long way because I, most what is it? That's just randomly. Most 25 year old single folks in their second job have a very different work from home environment than a 36 year old with three kids and their spouse at home. They're just totally different. And so the, the more you're able to connect those people so they can share common issues, we found out to be really, really productive because again, sometimes those folks can't relate to each other. So I just encourage folks to do that. I'm in that middle category, so I'm, I'm going to need to find a support group for the. <laughs> They're out there. Yeah, they're out. Yes. On a side point, my dad does have an afro, so I'm going to have to make a mention that you used that uh, anecdote before. Um, 
the one thing um, I've noticed actually uh, with the co-working space that we're part of uh, 1909, they have uh, started a parent support group um, for uh, folks who, you know, otherwise are interacting in their daily life, but now have, you know, an added, um, you, you know, either stress or an added new work paradigm that they have to somewhat um, balance between everything. Cause it is a really, um, a, it is a really unique um, circumstance, you know, you know, now that everyone's all cooped up in the same place. Um, you know, for me, the only thing I have to worry about is the two cats here going crazy. Uh, so I have really got nothing comparatively to you guys for sure. Um, I jokingly put on on Twitter earlier today that everyone is creating all these honey do list and I don't know how you guys are finishing your honey do list I don't have I don't have enough hours to start working on the closet um, with with you know with the current schedule um, but I will leave you with as I was writing this morning um, uh, on my peloton there was uh, the instructor actually had this really she she was very motivational in what she started the morning with and she said you know how big no matter how big our problems are uh, they're someone else's blessings and if that just kind of puts it in perspective that like Man, I'm stressed with my job, but I got a job. I'm stressed with my kid, but man, I get to come home every night. Well, come home. I'm, I, I spent nine weeks in Tallahassee not seeing her. And so now I get to be with her awesome. all day long. And it is a blessing. Yeah, amen. I would say two things. One, one our, at our staff meeting this morning for this group, again, personal opinion, this is, this is not a short-term thing. So sometimes some of my folks are like, hey, just three more weeks and I'll get there. I literally have to step back and say, listen, you got to get your infrastructure in place because this is probably a multi-month thing. Again, there's, it's not like one day they're going to be like, all right, the virus is all gone. Now June 1st, it's safe. So I would just encourage everyone, uh, again, it's part of this process that you need to think long-term because it's not going away. And very similar to what Sheila said, you know, we started off the year, we said, hey, we have this thing like, I have to, I have to. And, you know, I just tried to reposition with our team. Hey, we get to. And so that's way, that has so much more meaning now. It's like, we get to go to work. We get to still be employed. We get to like, go talk about what we do. And so it is just a different way to look at life. And when you, when you feel like you, you know, you don't have to, you get to, it does make everything that's happening uh, seem just so much more doable, especially with this. Like if you have, if the virus has not affected you and your family, what a nice problem. Because if it does, then all of a sudden, being frantic at work uh, seems so minor in comparison. So uh, just encourage everyone to stay safe and just enjoy the blessings we have. Amen. It doesn't look like we have um, any questions really on here. We uh, um, had, I think, one thing on Facebook that um, you responded to actually, Sheila. But, um, you know, that said, uh, I really appreciate your time here today and uh, talking about this. Again, if anyone's watching this on Friday, we're going to be uh, having a workshop with Sheila again. So make sure you uh, go check that out and sign up for that. But um, thank you both to uh, Jack and to Sheila for joining us. Uh, I hope you guys have a very caffeinated afternoon and uh, look forward to uh, chatting with you and working with you here in the, uh, in, in the uh, <laughs> next few days. Somebody just me messaged me about my background from the office. Um, so thank you very much for that, too. I greatly perfect. appreciate it. Perfect. All right. Have a great day, guys. Bye. Right. God bless. Thank you. It was awesome.